groups that sort of broke off from that. Nice, there's the IIIF Maps community group. So uh, what I have today is basically live demos for everything. So uh, stick with me while I swap back and forth. Uh, but here's the community group page and here's the link to it. Um, I'll share these slides out so everybody can go to these places. Uh, this just sort of goes over what they're, what they're about, their mission statement, their goals, and who's in it. And most importantly, if you want to become a part of it, how to find us and how to come uh, to the meetings or join Slack. Uh, it says there are monthly calls, but they are actually bi-weekly calls because we also have a technical specification group, which we'll get to next. Uh, but the community group, you can summarize it as uh, the main goal is to explore best practices for associating geographic information with IIIF materials, and more important, importantly, finding the use cases the community is interested in for the technical specification group to do some work and have some output. Uh, and here is my name. See, I am one of the members. Uh, they also have uh, a mission statement, which can be summarized, like Josh said, as to deliver the output to allow for the implementations for some of the use cases we come across. Uh, in particular, the first one is just associate geographic information with triple life materials. Uh, so we will go through the um, sort of history of what happened with that and what's available now. Uh, again, you can come here to figure out how to join our Slack channel and to register with Triple Life Discuss to get all of our announcements and when our calls when our calls are. So again, this one's every four weeks. Community is every four weeks, so they're biweekly, one and then the other every month. So why do we want geo support in the Triple Life Presentation API? Uh, Sort of when I asked this question and when the community group was there before the technical specification group and we researched, this was sort of the, the main answer. Uh, IIIF in the IIIF ecosystem, a great deal of humanities data and cultural heritage data is in there. And that's to say most of the media, the images, the audio, the video, often somehow pertains to humans and the things they've done and the things they've interacted with through time and across the planet. That means temporal and spatial characteristics are vital to um, properly explain a lot of the data. So where did that first round of geo support come from? Uh, chronologically, it came from annotation, but we'll talk about that later. Sort of the next step after figuring out what it looked like to put geo data next to IIIF resources, we decided that there should be an extension so that there was a property for IIIF resources. Uh, so that means a property for a collection, a manifest, a range, or a canvas where you can supply geographic information. Uh, so here, down here, this highlighted part is the nav place property, which has um, just a point geometry. Um, of course, it can be any other shape, but that's just the easiest to show in an example. Uh, so let's go learn some more about nav place. So nav place exists because of an extension. Uh, if you were here yesterday when the triple life editors were talking, we talked about how we can do extensions of the API, the presentation API to allow for some specific use case. Uh, one, uh, an easy one that was brought up yesterday is text granularity, for example, which we won't show here, but that was the uh, extension I used sort of as the rubric to get this one done. Uh, you'll notice it looks a lot like going to the presentation API spec. We do a good job just trying to keep it with the same technical uh, sort of structure and wording. Um, I won't read this word for word for you. Uh, just here to show you that it is a property and you can come here to read about why and how to use it, what exactly it looks like, the exact may, must, should, shouldn'ts um, on how to use it. Keep going down. The main the thing that drives it is GeoJSON. So when, when we've already defined a specification for presentation API, and when we, when we want to do more with it, we don't really want to have to write another spec if we don't have to. So I did some research and found that GeoJSON was sort of a baseline format that almost all of the um, web maps online use and even some of the desktop apps. So we decided to, to scope GeoJSON into this property and then extend the presentation API with the property. 
So the whole thing is that you can put GeoJSON data inside of it. You can do that because we wrote a context that describes NavPlace and how the GeoJSON context goes inside of it. As a super technical example, it's pretty easy. We have a vocabulary for the NavPlace property and then say inside of it, its context is GeoJSON. So just an easy assertion to say that's what's going on inside of that property. Uh, you know, everything's a feature collection with features inside of it. So it can be a feature collection with all of these kinds of features and as many as you'd like, though I think uh, we state we'd like you to be reasonable, but I'll show you how you can interpret that how you want to later. Here's some more talks about the linked data about it. And that's sort of like a, a real ancillary sort of character, even though it's really important for us and for IIIF, but um, most pipelines aren't linked data strict. So a lot of people don't really get into it and you don't have to, to understand what's going on here. Uh, and then at the end, just a full manifest example. So here's a whole manifest with uh, a nav place on it with a point. And I know this is a lot of brackets. We'll go and look at things that make more sense uh, for people who aren't super comfortable with code. Some things from implementation notes, I'll talk about the cookbook, which we're gonna get into. Um, and there you go, just a, a nice specification. So we came up with the specification, what's next? You come up with the specification because we need to have a way to have NavPlace and render that for people to look at. So when you use NavPlace, what does that look like? Here's just a screenshot, which again, we're gonna break away from because we're gonna do live examples, but it's a web map where I have fed it some IIIF data. And so these dots are those shapes and what shows up in the metadata are things like the image and the label and the summary and links out to viewers. So let's go through some of the things uh, in the community that have made that interesting. So earlier I had talked about the cookbook. So since we had the nav place property, we then went to the cookbook to give examples on uh, how to use it. So again, kind of look like, looks like a spec. It has less of the technical language in it and more about the use case and what you're doing and why you're doing it. Uh, in particular, this one has a manifest where we've extended the IIIF context and added the nav place property because we extended it. And so now this manifest says at this point, here's some information you should show. Uh, just to go a little further, I said you could do it on any of the resources. So not only did we write a recipe for doing it with a manifest, but for also doing it on the canvases inside of a manifest. So you see here, this canvas has a nav place. This canvas has a nav place. You'd assume you'd see two shapes. Um, as a more sort of relaxed thing, which I don't know if it has been brought up, but something I particularly enjoy doing, so I am gonna bring it up. There are IIIF guides. Uh, it's a place for authors or users like us to come and say, hey, here's how I use the nav place property. Here's sort of a way you can go about doing it. So this is a little more relaxed meant for users to say, how do I use the nav place property with a web map? Here I chose leaflet. I tell you why. Uh, I write the HTML for you, show you how to do it, tell you here's what your resource is going to be. Here's how you put a leaflet instance container there and initialize it and connect it with nav place to get your features. Uh, and then in the end, just a small view of what that would look like. Um, so you can see how short that was and how less you didn't see really many brackets, no mays or musts or shoulds. Um, just it's a little more of a relaxed place to go to learn more about some kind of implementation. Uh, so those are all places you can go to learn if you're interested in to have something like that. Why you might be interested in having something like that. So here you see, I just showed you those recipes and those recipes had a manifest. So now in viewers, like uh, for most cookbook recipes, you go off to Mirador, a universal viewer to see it work. Here we're going off to a nav place viewer to see it work. So I had that big manifest. I just showed you all of that stuff, all of those specs. And now we're at a screen with a dot on it. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. And simply to say this manifest pertains to this location. There's a lacoon bronze there. And here's a uh, English and Italian label for it. So I showed you a second recipe. You'd imagine it'd be really cool and you get to see two dots, hooray. Uh, so here was one canvas, which is that same thing, the bronze with an a, with a English and Italian label. And then on the other side of the US, there's a painting of the same subject. Let me just say it's right there. 
um, you'll notice in these labels, we said things like current location. Uh, one thing about the nav place property is that it does not imply existence or, or that something is at a place now or then just by simply having the property. Uh, again, it's really abstracted of this location is connected with this resource. If you want to explain something like this was there in 1989 or this will be there in 2050, your best way to do that is through the metadata that gets shown when it's talking about the resource. I'll end there before we get too, 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 too deep into it. Um, so I'm going to show you some stuff from the community. This comes from Mark Baggett in the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. He said this is a collection of historical panoramic photographs taken at the Smoky Mountain National Park. So he has a collection full of manifests. Um, you may have seen color coded. The color coded is down here. So it's a collection full of manifests. That's why everything's purple. And those manifests um, have a canvas in them that I can go grab a thumbnail from. And he has uh, labels on all this stuff. So now it, you can just come here with your collection, which you see here in the URL. And it just draws everything for you. And now he can use this to show it off or show to researchers or use this to say, hey, you got the labels wrong or that photograph doesn't make sense there. Um, if you really, really want to make sure that he got it in the right place, we can uh, switch out the base map. Yeah, we can. There we go. And then here's a little more elevation, some more words in it to let you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's the Smoky Mountains. I, I, I think he got it. Uh, I'll go off to another example. This one came from Aaron Straub Cope and the S, uh, the San Francisco International Airport. Um, boy, I don't have that specific example open, but let's do a trick. Might make more sense if I show you this. So what the San Francisco Museum does, or maybe it's just the airport itself, is they offer all their flight data. So every night, the flight data is updated with where flight left from, where it went to, along with the flight path. Uh, we were messing around the other day for about 30 minutes, egging each other on. And he said, oh, man, I think I can do those flight data as a manifest with nav place. You'll notice here it's a referenced nav place, so you don't see the uh, coordinates yet. Referenced means all I've done is given you the ID. You have to resolve the ID if you want the data. And I'm, I'm sorry, Aaron, if I'm doing this live and it fails. It didn't. Hooray. So you see here that resolves and there's the actual features and there's the actual geometry. So all that boils down to that now shows up on the viewer if you can feed it that manifest. So here's that same flight path you just saw with, uh, uh, I think there's like a dot or a shape. Yeah. Where the flight originated. And it just says where it went from, where it went to, um, and the flight number. So there's an example of a flight path, which I, which I thought really made sense for, you know, geo people, of course. Yeah, like that's easy to understand. So I thought that was a great example. And I uh, appreciate that he put that together for us. I will give you another one. This comes from Princeton, uh, from their platform called Figgy, which has old insurance maps. So you'll see here, there's a box around China. And when you click on it, it says, oh, sure enough, there's the Eastern China, Korea, and adjacent parts of Mongolia, um, and a map for it, which also has the link to go look at it in UV or Mirador. Yes. Um, so another Interesting example, but that doesn't use nav place, but I thought that was a really good um, use case in this area is old maps online. So this is where I'm at right now. That's why the map is here, but you can essentially define an area and it does what you see. It says, oh, that map is right there, but this is more for um, searching based on area for something. Um, so here's another example of if someone were to implement nav place where I think it would work pretty good. So part of the community job and my job is to find people who haven't implemented it yet, or maybe they have, and I'm completely failing and misrepresenting them, um, and say, hey, is there a way you think I could do something with these bounding boxes in nav place? That's something that I've been approached with that I didn't specifically um, you know, write anything about or come up with a solution of, oh, if you have a bounding box, do this. 
But if that becomes an issue in one of the repositories or someone just really gets me on Slack, that's something we can look at. Uh, okay, so this one's fun. I, I'm doing this too on purpose. Let me make sure I'm caught up with myself. Okay, so NavPlace does have some limitations. Uh, first off, you notice that I was using WGS or that I was using GeoJSON. That fixes you to the WGS84 coordinate system. However, you can take this data and feed it into other systems that know how to convert between coordinate systems. It's just that you can't put coordinate data inside of NavPlace that isn't WGS84. Uh, so that's one thing, you know, we really asked around in the community and said, hey, can we do that? Is that going to be okay? The main answer was yes. There were some people that was not okay for, and especially when we get to some of the more complicated use cases, we'll tell you why. Uh, what you see on screen is not what I just talked about. It's a limitation that says NavPlace is intended to connect resources with areas. The areas should be bounded discrete things like those boxes you saw or those dots. It shouldn't be outlines at the township, city, country, or continental level. Like, oh, I would just want to have all the streets in the U.S. outlined. Um, that goes beyond what we intend to support. And we actually specifically say that in the NavPlace extension because you don't really know how certain things will fail. For example, I have a pretty JSON uh, extension in Chrome, and it absolutely fails with this with an error that says the string is too big to be parsed. So if you do something this large, we're never quite sure, you know, what that might end up doing. Uh, so then I had to stick my foot in my mouth because I took this JSON and made it a manifest and fed it to the viewer and it worked just fine. Uh, however, I would say stuff like that is out of scope because it is just way too much geography. Remember that. Okay. So that was sort of nav place and sort of our first deliverable was can we have a way to associate those geographic areas with these resources and we say yes use nav place so i'm going to pause right here because that was a lot uh i don't know if it's the right time to have a q a but uh if you wanted to ask specifically just about that and that use case now's the time because i'm going to move on to another more focused use case Is that fair game, Josh, or should I just keep going? If folks have questions about NavPlace, um, I think that's 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 fine to pause here. And I can um, okay. share the link to your slides if that's all right. Uh, there's a question about where to get links to some of these demos. Yes, yes, you can. Do you need me to give you the URL? I have the maps TSG. I'll share that. Oh, yeah, good. you got it. Yeah, you got it. So, yes, here's your moment. Any questions about associating geographic areas with resources or nav place in particular. I'll give like a minute or two, see if someone asks a question and I can try to answer it. I'll check the chat. Yeah, there's a question in the chat. Links, yes, 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 there's that link. Is this type of three level to use case already we are going to get into that. I'm not going to answer that right now. That's for the next section. <laughs> it will be answered. Can you adapt Getty? I cannot adapt Getty. I don't work at Getty, but I would hope someone can <laughs> and probably uh, put their stuff in a nav place. Right. And, you know, when we wrote nav place, nobody was using nav place. We, we got people who were interested in having it. And once we developed the extension, now we're starting to see implementations of it. And I think a place like the Getty would be a great place to have uh, NavPlace come out with their IIIF data. But I can't do it, no, unless they want an independent contractor. Then maybe. Yes, Mike Appleby. I'm getting to it. Oh, I didn't show his. He's right. Uh, I skipped these. Sorry, Mike. Thank you. Uh, so here's an example of Mike using NavPlace and his viewer. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Uh, so his is saying, okay, I have NavPlace property, but like, I like to see my resources in a mirror door. So here he's stuck a little web map in next to mirror door. And so these resources are uh, just shown not only in mirror door, but also on the map. 
So you can see he's using the power of mirror door like had two open. So now I see two on the map. Um, so that's another example of a viewer uh, that we'd like to have. And if we could do a proper plugin for mirror door, uh, it'd be great. But we have not worked on that yet. Beyond Mike doing this. So he might beat me to it. Uh, like we said before, not only space, but time. So this viewer he has uh, implements time. So again, you see the resources here on a web map. But what he's going to do is use a time slider to filter what shows. So as he gets earlier or later in time, if the uh, as he gets earlier in time, if something was from later than that time, you'll see it disappear. And then he's smart enough to actually refocus on what's left, which is cool. I like that trick. So there's another example of how you might use nap place. Really, just wanted to show you, you know, how what it looks like, what it looks like to use it. And the goal is just to get your shapes on your maps. Thank you, Mike. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. That was like two and a half minutes. Sorry, there's a lot, there's a lot of trying to get it to it all. <clears throat> okay, so we've got, I've mentioned we got annotation in there working. You've seen the nav place property. Great. Um, we were told immediately uh, that that this wasn't enough. This doesn't meet uh, all the needs in the maps group. There's a lot of other use cases where people are doing things that require different kinds of data sets other than just, here's a point. Uh, here's some GeoJSON. Like, here's just that location. So one of those that was focused on pretty much right away when we started was uh, georeferencing. Um, these geoterms we're using aren't standardized on the web, uh, which is why I'm showing you things. So like nav place, what we were doing with that, I consider geolocation. Uh, Georeferencing is a little different. So georeferencing is the process of mapping internal coordinates of a resource to geographic coordinates. Uh, the resources um, are usually a canvas or the image itself. You don't usually georeference a manifest because that has many images. And so georeferencing a single thing for many doesn't work. That's like a non sequitur. So here we're focusing on images and canvases. So before I showed you nav place, and I said it had GeoJSON and it had the point. So what makes georeferencing more complicated is that you also need to know those original pixel coordinates from that image. And we also need to have new motivations inside of annotation to go along with this. So it requires extension. Uh, I'm gonna go up and show you a couple examples. Where, 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 where are you there? Before I had mentioned, we actually started off with the annotation. Uh, so this is why we're chronologically out of order. We did annotation, decided something better, came back to annotation. So here's the first and third. We come back to doing annotation. Uh, it's the same thing. Instead of a nav place property, inside of the annotations property, you have an annotation whose body is GeoJSON. Uh, annotations are really shareable and they target things without um, altering the original resource. So there are many systems that don't actually want to have the nav place property altered. I'd rather have nav place on it and then have other users target me with you know conflicting or argumentative annotations. Uh, and of course that worked just fine. Same thing, you can scope GeoJSON into this body, good to go. Um, so I'm not gonna go into it technically because technically it's a lot of the same thing. Um, but the goal is I have this area and in this area is this. So this actually lines up with this, you know, top left to bottom right. I'm saying this is actually right here using the annotation but without officially doing it, right? It's still just a shape on a map with a pop-up. So all maps picked this up and went a little further and said, okay, I think we can georeference if we do stuff like that. So you saw that image on there. Here's that same image with that same locational information, except he actually did the job of lining it up. So you see how the river's right where the river would be, the roads are where the road would be. That's georeferencing. That's the difference. I actually want to put the resource I'm giving you the coordinates for into modern coordinates. And as you can imagine, that doesn't always line up and we'll get more into that. 
another thing he did, which I really liked, which I hadn't thought about and actually was a later use case, was, well, sometimes I don't actually want to show the whole image. I just want to show the snippet. And so here is that cropped down to just being this, uh, which is sort of another, an uh, another use case. Whoop. That one might not be lined up. Um, okay, so we had that example with the annotation. It's being done. We have examples of what that might look like in a viewer. We have a handful of different uh, platforms that are doing it. So all of that means we can do an extension. Uh, you'll see here, you'll notice the link is preview. That's because this is still a work in progress. Uh, as we're working on stuff, of course, we make it available for people to look at, especially because I ask for review and the TSG asks for review and it goes through the TRC, all the fun stuff. Um, so I'm not going to actually read through this for you because it's not necessarily ready for public consumption. But I will show you, it looks a lot like the spec. It looks a lot like the other extensions. So we're doing the same thing again, where we're going to define that web annotation motivation. We're going to tell you what the process is. We're going to tell you the required data you need. Uh, and we're not going to talk about that right now. Uh, we tell you we're going to use annotation. We tell you what the pieces of the annotation are as they relate to what you're doing for those required data sets. Uh, that new property for providing those coordinates, which uh, we've already been told they don't like that uh, term. So we've, we're going to change it. Uh, another, another property for what else you might need to do with that data. This I'm not super privy on. I know all maps and BERT and they could explain it better, but you might have different transformation types between the cool, the image coordinates to, to, to the WGS84 coordinates. Um, as you get more complicated between linear, quadratic, and cubic, they become more accurate. I think that's the point there. Uh, and then followed by full examples, which I'm not going to make you stare at. Uh, doing it with a manifest, doing it just with a standalone annotation. More about linked data. We had to write a context where we describe all those terms. And just so in good faith, I will show you that we are trying to be linked data conscious. So all the... Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I screwed it up. I got you. Ah, lifetime. Here we go. You're going to see things like georeferencing being defined, transformation being defined, polynomial thin plate spline. I'm scoping GeoJSON into the body. Um, so this is just to show we're also providing the link data extension to go along with this stuff. And that's sort of uh, a big part of the process of doing an extension. Okay, that's probably too much on that. So showed you all the stuff that makes your head hurt, but a lot of people just want to know, what does georeferencing look like? So I showed you with the all maps example. I'm going to show you with some more examples. So here is a project called Imagine Rio. Uh, yesterday, I had brought up view cones. So imagine Rio's thing is they 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 have images from a spot, but they also incorporate the angle they were looking. And so they produce view cones. Um, we've been approached with, can you do view cones with nav place? And it is a recipe that is on our minds that I believe we're going to start working on. So soon you'll be able to see what that looks like using nav place. More importantly, though, when you pick an image, they've done the same thing, where they hide these ones. That makes more sense. And you'll notice uh, something to notice are the tools and the stuff available, because you'll notice as we go from platform to platform, a lot of them use the same tools, uh, which is important. You'll see they do the same thing though. So here's an image of this road that they've lined up, and so it's over its actual location in modern coordinates. If we zoom in real, real far, you will notice it is not a perfect rectangle anymore, right? They've done a certain amount of image warping because this is an old map that might not have been perfectly accurate. So they've warped it to what it would look like if it were accurate so they could line it up. Uh, you'll also notice they have a timeline. So here, as you go through time, it'll filter the different dots out here that you'll see based on the date the map is from. There's a fun one. That is Martin Passos, and I, I thank him for letting me do that. Okay, 
So this next one is sort of where we intersect uh, with some other groups. So this is Snapshot. What's different about Snapshot is yes, they're georeferencing, but they're georeferencing like in Street View. So this is a 3D georeferencing of this panoramic image of this mountain range. So I can actually do this and look at it as if I was standing there. Can I turn? Can I turn? Yeah. And you'll notice they do a pretty good job of lining up that horizon when, when, the, when the tiles load for me and it loads in real nice. You would see that they actually did a pretty good job lining up that mountain range. Uh, so other, you know, kind of scientifically, there you go. Um, that's good for things uh, like studying glacial movement or glacial melt because they can go through time and look at this same picture in this spot and have it georeferenced. And at, what you'll notice is you have to do more and more image warping as things change shape. And so uh, sort of in that way, you can study things like glacial movement and change in the actual uh, uh, earth <laughs> okay 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 where are we at on time oh boy i need to get moving so this must be hard how 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 in the heck is a user supposed to be able to do that you know that was a lot so much technical stuff how can i as a user be expected to do that i do not geo reference so i'm gonna go show you what a user who has no idea what they're doing would go ahead and try uh so this is chronoscope world another geo referencing platform where not only do you see the georeference view, you actually have the option to edit it or provide your own. So we're gonna go ahead and try. Here's that image I was just showing you. So again, notice the tools, you know, like I can, I can you know, make sure I'm good and lined up. I can switch between uh, satellite view and, and night view, and I have all these special options I can do. Um, a lot of those, you know, you keep seeing, uh, but to the point, how do I do this? Well, it's pretty easy. You, you just kind of say, I have this image here and, and you come into something you think you want to line up with. Uh, and then you say, so here, this road, let's try that. You say, okay, I know this road's right here. Oh, I think this is a little off. Let's actually say, I think it's out here. Oh, you go, no, I think I missed it. Oh no, I screwed it up. Can I, can I just kind of, maybe, maybe it's here. Maybe it's here, right? And you'll notice each time I do that, the shape of the image between the points actually changes. That's the warping. So since this is an old map that probably was not accurate, we have to come in and tell it where some special points on it are to be accurate. And then the interface will warp it so that it correctly lines up. Uh, here you'll see, you know, I, I don't do this. I'm not good at it. And so I do this and I just say, uh, there you go. Um, there you go, chronoscope. I think I got it right. <laughs> And then they contact you and tell you they did not. And in fact, they didn't save that, but good try. Uh, so that's obviously not the only place that you can do georeferencing. All maps. So that georeferencing extension you saw is, I don't know if sponsored is the right word to use, but sort of sponsored by all maps or the people they got the grant from. Uh, they're they're the ones who are trying to make sure that that specif specification gets written. So I am going to hand this off to Bert Span to do a little georeferencing in all maps. Hey, Brian. Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can share my screen. Stop. Share. I hope people can see my screen. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. So, hi. My name is Brett Spahn. Uh, I'm an independent software engineer. Uh, I'm working on all maps, uh, which is a set of open source tools for georeferencing triple F maps. Um, you can find it on allmaps.org. Um, let's go ahead and georeference a map. So, this is the digital collections portal of the uh, Amsterdam City Archives. Um, Let's find a map. Uh, this is a map of a canal that was dug between the city of Amsterdam and the, and the North Sea. Um, the, the city archives have a triple F server. So if we copy the image 
uh, URL. Uh, they don't have the uh, they don't support the presentation to have presentation API, but they do have um, they do support the uh, image API. You can go to OMAPS editor, which is the dereferencing interface of OMAPS. You can just simply paste the, um, the TurpaF link. It can be manifest or uh, image URL. You can load it. And then the first step is selecting the part of the image that presents the map. In this case, it's just a simple rectangle. Then we go to the next tab, the dereferencing tab. We go to Amsterdam, which all of you know is right there. This is the new market square. I think it's somewhere right there. And we go to the little town of zoom out. Town of Spandam, which is right there. And it's right there. And then we find another point. Usually three points is enough. Let's find use this strange peninsula, which is right there. And then we're done. Um, and now you can open this. Um, it saves the reference annotation. And you can view the, the warped transformed map on top of the map of the world. So this 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 application transforms the triple F images in, in real time. And you can press the space. It also does opacity. Um, so this is how easy it is. Um, back to you, Brian. Perfect, thank you. I'll take over and go back to share screen if I can push that button. Boom. Uh, that was it. That's what I had planned because I wanted to make sure we had a few minutes for questions. Uh, I know that was a lot. Um, I saw some things in the chat like, can you uh, do the opacity while you warp? Of course you can. Uh, I know he didn't show you that in all maps, but he has that same slider. Uh, that's like a baseline functionality thing, right? And so that's the question. Um, sort of you heard yesterday about triple F commons. Uh, for things that are common across all these platforms, is there a way to make a component for it, for example? Uh, should we encourage that for everyone who's going to attempt to use the georeferencing format we're coming up with? Uh, you know, those are questions I don't have answers to yet. Um, part of the fun of what we get to do. <laughs> Am I sharing the right screen? Do you see the presentation? Yes. Okay. And then here's the link. I'll stick it in a chat because there's a lot of where do I go see this is. Um, that's in the Maps GSG folder. I think there's some level of share permission on it. But if you're part of IIIF, you should be able to get to it. And I'm sure Josh will move it to a place where everybody can get to it. Ah, yeah, there you go. Uh, so questions, yes, we're here. There's some other maps chairs here from the community and TSG. Does anyone have a specific question? Scrolling through the chat. Oh, just lots of, lots of, that's good, that's good. I'll take it. Now Bert with the all maps. Anybody have an open and all maps button? Ah, gosh, we talk about that kind of stuff all the time. We just, you know, I, for that image, Jason, like he said, I don't think he's, he might have a drag and drop or something. Um, But there won't really be like an open this canvas or open this manifest in all maps until we have a, a spec, right? You don't, you don't want to front load that until we've decided on what exactly that looks like. So no, not yet. I would say if I'm allowed to answer that question, Bert. <laughs> okay. We have maps in our collection. That would be cool. Yes. If you have maps, you should join the community group or the TSG if you're interested. Uh, yes, like Mike said, he even does time for the timeline stuff, you know, which is something I think uh, platforms like Imagine Rio would pick up from. Uh, I, I'll say the same for all the examples I showed you today. We don't have the spec yet. So everything you saw is doing it just a little bit differently. Uh, in Chronoscope World, for example, you saw all those dots, right? But all he's really using are the four corners. So all of his pieces are 
four corners and then math in between. Whereas what you saw Bert do was this point, 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 that point. And then that math sort of lines up the image around it to that different. Uh, I think, I think I can represent Matthias in saying he does not consider that doing it with ground control points. So for chronoscope world, they would wait for us to come up with that spec and then he would maybe cherry pick some data. He thought he should have worked that way, or maybe he'll just be absolutely opposed to it and, and tell us all about why. Um, all of that's good. And I think everything I showed, there's some level of people can use it and contribute to it. Uh, for uh, most of them are free to use. I don't know if I would use the word open source, but if I'm wrong and you're here and I showed your thing, speak up. <laughs> Got about five minutes. I, I won't. I won't hit you with more. I could sit here and demo all day. It's my favorite thing to do. Is this mic? I'm gonna open this link, Mike. We're gonna demo. That's what you get. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. That's his his link to the actual demo. That's right. He's got it up. I think his other viewer is a Heroku app. He's also got up. And I know Elliot Princeton is here and. Our Elliot from <laughs> Elliot Jordan from Princeton is here. He also has a viewer just like this. Yeah, I, Sorry, I pasted Elliot. the link in the chat. Good. Yeah, yeah. And so if you think you have something like this, even if it's not using nav place at all, but you're doing things on a map like this, um, boy, am I about to shame triple IF lifetime? Mm. There's a map somewhere with all the institutions on it. And I know they don't use that place. That's what I was going to show. Sorry, guys. Oh, I don't know where it is. Is it this? No. Okay. No, that's enough. <laughs> one of the things, I'll, I'll just jump in. One of the things uh, that uh, Elliot, I think, mentioned in the um, in the chat is that he's he's been able to Put the nav place property into the Princeton's map collections at Yale. We're working, we have sort of different metadata sources for some of our maps and others. So some of our map material in our digital library has will have nav place says, you know, uh in the in the manifests. We'd be really interested to for uh, to talk to other collection owners uh, or publishers about um exposing that data if they have it. So we've seen a lot of client examples here and and how to how to use it. But obviously, we want to encourage people who are content publishers to also incorporate. Mm -hmm. uh, something about that nav place viewer is I'm trying to make it like official and available. I actually have it open for community review, both for the UI and the README and the functionality. Um, if there's something you notice about it, that would be like, hey, it would be great if you had that for us. Oh, I fixed this. I'm going to close that. You can always put in a bug report as an issue or tell me things like, hey, sometimes that starting zoom being really zoomed out at the continental level is like terrible because I can't see my shapes. Uh, that was a great example is this, right? From out here, you had no idea they actually had the starting, uh, the origin and the landing location, right? I had to zoom way in for you to see, oh, they actually did define that as an area. Um, you know, not a bug. I wouldn't say it's a bug. You know, I have it as a feature because I imagine that like this is the 99% use case, but that's, that, that was just that was just me so like i'm probably wrong <laughs> uh anything like invert some of the rhetoric from negative to positive you know simple things that just make it good for the community and of course if you're trying to implement nav place that place viewer is a great place to test <laughs> mutual mutually beneficial um, oh, yeah. And then what I was going to say is content creators. So the very, 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 very first thing Glenn said was, well, like, why can't I just create an app place there? And my answer is, well, because it's a viewer. It's not for creation. Uh, someone somewhere in the world would have to put something together that says, if I have a resource and I want to put geo information on it, 
I know. Yeah. I need to have a place where I can define those geo things and then a way to save them. So what you saw there was I gave you resource URI. I had a web map to pick a point. And then I say that point is for that resource. So you see it targets that resource with this geographic information. Something like that, which is making this annotation, could obviously have made an app place property, no problem. But this I switched my focus, so I didn't I didn't finish this. And it doesn't do nap place yet, but it could. Okay, that's gonna be the 950 mark. All right. Well, unless there's a, a last minute question for Brian and we can, you know, we'll leave the chat open. Um happy to continue the discussion there or on the AAAF Slack, but uh this has been really great brian i really appreciate the walkthrough there's a lot of it's a Hi. lot of impressive work the the maps group is only um you know it's not has not been around that long and it's really worked through a lot of these uh great use cases and demos so thanks for demoing these things thank you all for joining us i'm really glad that you get to see uh some insight into the work that's happening in the community group and the technical specification group um with that we are going to take a 10 minute break before the top of the hour uh, our next session is uh, a showcase uh, and demo of um, uh, related to the museums part of the AAAF community and then a panel uh, about um, some impl implementation questions and aspects. Um, and then following that, uh, we'll do the last session of our uh, online meeting, which is a presentation of some of the strategic planning framework uh, for the coming years uh, developed by the AAAF Consortium Executive Committee. Um, so join us for that uh, after the next session. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, we'll keep the Zoom room open and we'll see you in just about 10 minutes. Thanks all. Thanks, everybody.